Please read us a story, old bear. We'll all gather round. Dear old bear, sit in your favorite chair. We'll sit all around, all around, dear old bear. It was cold and grey outside. Jolly Tall had been gazing out of the window for days. What are you waiting for? asked Rabbit. I'm waiting for it to snow, said Jolly. It is winter, isn't it? It doesn't always snow in winter, said Rabbit. In fact, it hardly ever does, said Duck gloomily. I know where there's some snow, said Little Bear. It must be left over from last winter. I'll get it for you. Without waiting to explain, Little Bear rushed off. In a moment, he was back again carrying a large glass bubble. Inside the bubble, they could see a little house and a tree covered in a layer of tiny white snowflakes. Is that all snow does? asked Jolly, staring into the bubble. Does it just lie around making things whiter than usual? Of course not, said Little Bear. That wouldn't be any fun. You could make it into balls and throw it. Or slide on it, said Zebra. And jump into heaps of it, said Rabbit. And make footprints. You can build things with it too, said Duck. Goodness, said Jolly. There doesn't look enough of it for that. Holding the glass bubble tightly, Little Bear jumped up and down. A flurry of snowflakes leapt from the tiny house and tree and rushed around inside the glass. Look at it now, he squeaked. There's still not enough to make a snowball, said Jolly. And anyway, you can't get it out, said Duck. Wait a minute, said Zebra. I know where there's lots of snow. This way, everybody. She led the way to the kitchen, where Bramble Brown was busy making some special biscuits. To stop the biscuit dough sticking to the rolling pin, he was shaking flour from a flour shaker. Oh, it looks just like a snowstorm, cried Jolly Tall, feeling very excited now. Watch this for a trick, said Zebra, as she dashed towards the falling flour. Whoopee, she cried. And in no time at all, her black stripes had almost disappeared. Rabbit tried to gather up a pawful of the flour. It's not very good for snowballs, he said. It doesn't stick together. But it's perfect for dough balls, cried Little Bear, rolling up a piece of dough and throwing it at Rabbit. The dough ball stuck to Rabbit's bottom and looked like an extra tail. This flour snow doesn't come off, said Zebra, jumping up and down, trying to shake herself clean. I think you're going to need a bath, Zebra, said Bramwell. We'll need a bar of soap and something to scrub you with. Rabbit and Little Bear went off to see what they could find. While they were gone, Bramwell Brown carefully filled a dish with warm water. It was just big enough for Zebra to stand in. It wasn't long before all the toys were busy trying to clean Zebra. It's still not coming off, she grumbled. It just gets stickier and stickier. Flour and water make a sort of glue, said Duck. You'll probably have to stay white forever. No, you won't, said Bramble kindly. We'll get you clean. All the scrubbing and splashing made even more bubbles. Snow bubbles, cried Little Bear, popping them with his paws. Hurry up, Zebra. We want to use your bath as a snow machine. After lots of rubbing and scrubbing, Zebra's stripes at last reappeared. While the others wrapped her in a warm towel, Jolly Tor was peering into the bath. What have you done with all the bubbles, he asked. Bubbles never last, said Duck. And anyway, they would have made very sloppy snow. Why don't we go and see if Old Bear has any ideas? Old Bear was in the playroom where he'd been busy cutting out paper decorations. He'd made paper stars, paper bells, and paper lanterns. He'd even made paper snowflakes. You can't really play with these, said Little Bear. No, you can't, said Old Bear. 
They're only meant for looking at. We want some snow for Jolly, said Rabbit. Snow you can play with. What about these, said Old Bear, scattering a blizzard of paper pieces in the air. Lovely, said Rabbit. And nice and slippery, too, said Little Bear, taking a run at a heap of them and skidding along on his bottom. What we need is a sledge, said Rabbit, or Little Bear will wear out his trousers. He fetched a cardboard box and Bramwell cut away the sides. Duck tied a string to the front and they pulled it along to test it. Now, if we had a slope, said Rabbit, we could take it in turns to slide to the bottom. I don't think I could, said Jolly. I wouldn't fit in the sledge. Never mind, said Bramwell. You can help with the slope. He disappeared and came back pulling a large white sheet. He gave a corner to Jolly Tall. Now, said Bramwell, when the others climb on, Lift up your end, and they should slide all the way down. Rabbit and Little Bear pushed the sledge onto the sheet, and Little Bear climbed in. There's only room for two, said Rabbit. As soon as they were ready, Little Bear called out, One, two, three, go! Jolly Tall and Bramwell lifted their end of the sheet. Suddenly, the toys found themselves sliding very fast to the other end. Look out! cried Little Bear as the sledge whizzed off the sheet, across the room, and crashed into the wall on the other side. Uh, I think we need a softer landing, said Rabbit, fluffing up his flattened fur. He helped Little Bear to his feet. I've got an idea, said Little Bear. Let's pile a heap of cushions against the wall. Ready, steady, go, they called to Jolly. Up went the sheet. Down went the toys, straight into the heap of cushions. As they landed, clouds of feathers puffed out of a little hole in one of the cushions. Look, it's feather snow, cried Little Bear. Very soon, all the toys were jumping in the feathers. They rolled in them, crawled through them, and piled them in heaps. Is this like snow? asked Jolly. It's better, said Little Bear. It doesn't melt, and it doesn't make you cold. Let's put some round the windows, suggested Rabbit. Then it will look as if real snow has settled there. He went over to the window and began to pile feathers in each corner. When he reached the third window pane, he stopped and looked. Then looked again. Somebody's already done this one, he called to the others. The window did have a white covering around the edges, but it was on the outside. It isn't feathers cried Little Bear excitedly. It's real snow! All the toys stared out of the window in amazement. Now we can play outside, said Zebra. Well, actually, it looks a bit deep for me, said Little Bear. And a bit cold for me, said Old Bear. At that moment, Bramwell Brown came into the room carrying a huge plateful of his special snowflake biscuits. I think what you need is some of my snow, he said. Jolly Tall thought about the flower snow and the paper snow and the feather snow. Then he looked at the real snow floating down outside. Do you know, he said, munching one of the freshly baked biscuits, Bramwell's snow is probably the kind of snow I like best.